Many thanks for staying with us, everyone. Let's begin with the National Working Committee uh, meet of the All Progressives Grand Alliance emergency meeting which held yesterday uh, well in an attempt to which held within the week last week in an attempt to revive the party from relegation in the meantime um, the leadership of the party abga has debunked claims by the vice chairman of the party of the southeastern zone also so, who presided over the meeting of the nwc which sought to ratify the purported suspension of the national chairman victor oye uh, in a press briefing today in Oka, the Anambra State Capital, the National Publicity Secretary of the party, Mr. Obi Okoye, says that the Ozo um, zone as a zone of vice chairman of the party does not have the constitutional powers to convene or preside over the meeting of the National Working Committee of ABGA. He also maintains that the members of the new National Working Committee remain committed to the resolutions reached at the peace meeting, which was convened at the instance of the national leader and chairman of the Board of Trustees, Governor Willie Obiano, on October the 13th, 2016, wherein members of the NWC collectively committed themselves to the continued growth and development of the party under the leadership of Victor Oye as the national chairman. Well, let's hear what the National Publicity Secretary had to say. Attention of the National Working Committee of ABGA has once again been drawn to a news item on television yesterday, the 24th of October 2016, in which the Vice Chairman of ABGA Southeast, Osama Bezo Kafo, claimed to have presided over a fictitious meeting of the National Working Committee to ratify a purported suspension of the National Chairman, Dr. Victor Oye. May I therefore, on behalf of the National Working Committee of APGA, assure members and well-wishers of our great party that no such meeting of APGA National Working Committee was ever held at any time or in any place where any such decision was ever taken. Well, that's the National Publicity Secretary of Abga debunking the resolutions arrived at at yesterday's um, National NWC emergency meeting. Moving on now, Nigerian state governors have been asked to partner with the federal government in diversifying the economy to check the effects of recession in the country. That was the outcome of the National Economic Council meeting presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo at the presidential villa. The governor of Imo State, Rocha Zokorocha, said the council had decided to make agriculture the pivot on which other economic activities resolve. The Council cautions the Standard Organization of Nigeria and NAVAC to take stringent measures to stem importation of what it called low-quality goods into the country. The Council also commended the Central Bank of Nigeria for the introduction of the Anchor Borrowers Program to enable farmers increase their yield. While so many resolutions were arrived at at the end of the NEC meeting. Well, they're moving, in, moving on now. Um, to one of the main topics of the day, Nigeria's former president, Goodluck Jonathan, has been speaking on the arms deal scandal which involved his former national security advisor. He says that it is impossible for the former national security advisor, Colonel Dasambo Dasuki, to have stolen $2.2 billion as being accused by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. He was responding to questions after a lecture on youth entrepreneurship at the famous Oxford Union in the United Kingdom. Former President Goodluck Jonathan said, and I quote, this, they said the national security advisor, Sambo Dasuki, stole $2.2 billion I don't believe somebody can just steal $2.2 billion. We bought warships, we bought aircraft, we bought lots of weapons for the army, and so on and so forth. And you're still saying $2.2 billion? So where did we get the money to buy all of those things? He goes on to say, I agree with you that there are issues of corruption in Nigeria since 1960 till date. Yes, there are still corruption issues, but some of it... Uh, was obviously overblown. I'd say exaggerated, and they give a very bad impression about our nation. You cannot say the National Security Advisor stole $2.2 billion. It's not just possible. And um, Dr. Jonathan, however, pointed out that some of the corruption cases 
were still in court and would rather allow the legal processes to reveal the facts of the matter. He said one thing about the issue of corruption is that these matters are in court. Let's allow the processes and I'm not saying there is no corruption in Nigeria. There is corruption. If you look at corruption, there's almost no country that is free. The degree varies. The perception varies. Well, we are aware that uh, Mr. Dasuki has been in detention since December the 1st, 2015. He was arrested by the State Security Service for allegedly misappropriating $2.2 billion meant to purchase equipment for the Nigerian military in its battle against the terrorist group Boko Haram. Well, now we move on to the raid on the judges by the DSS and the National Judicial Policy, which was launched on Monday. The CJN, also the Chief Justice of Nigeria, also set up a Judicial Ethics Committee charged with the duties of preparing amendments to the Judicial Code of Conduct as a need arises. Part of the responsibility of um, the Ethics Committee is to undertake uh, on elaborate provisions of the code, explain and remind judicial officers of the provisions of the code, and generally do all such things necessary to ensure continuous high standards of the judicial accountability and probity. Um, well, the conversation has thrown up a lot. Um, a lot of issues have arisen from the rate of the DSS, and um, it prompted the national. It's part of the reason why the National Judicial Council came up with a policy which is called the new national judicial policy and um, interestingly one of a major issue that um, has raised a lot of eyebrows is the decision by the NJC to ban the media covering anything that has to do with investigation of the judges that were raided on by the DSS well to to shed some light on the discussion I'm now being joined from Abuja Studios by a legal practitioner and a policy analyst, Aliyu Abdullahi. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you, Mr. Thank Abdullahi, you, for joining uh, us on the program. Great to be here. The, NJC, the new NJC policy that was launched yesterday by the Chief Justice of Nigeria and the ethics committee that was also inaugurated. But uh, the big question here is why now this policy was uh, introduced since April 2016, but it was just launched only yesterday. You know, why the delay in the launching of this policy? Well, actually, it's not uh, unconnected with the recent happenings uh, in the judiciary, uh, the raid by the DSS on some of the judges' houses and the, uh, their arrests. Um, the NJC received complaints in the past uh, from various bodies, individuals, uh, possibly even the DSS itself. Uh, do, do they actually act on it? And uh, how speedily do they really act on those uh, complaints? I think this is uh, really uh, 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 where the NJC has to uh, have a reform and why they feel and think uh, the reform they actually have uh, uh, in their in their kit has to come up now. But let's not forget, we are actually uh, mixing two issues right now, or even by the polity in the country. There is issues of misconduct, uh, disciplinary issues of judges, which is within the purview of uh, the NJC. But where there is an alleged crime, that in itself, it could be a misconduct on the part of the NGC, uh, NGC's mandate, but definitely it's within the state to prosecute, to investigate and prosecute such actions that constitute crimes uh, uh, and, and offenses. And uh, failure to do that, it will be like we're having two different kind of laws in the country, which we do not really have. We have one law. There is no separate law for the elite or for the judiciary and one for the common people. The law is one and the same. Where you violate the law, you will answer the law. The state must prosecute on behalf of the country. And that's the case where what we're facing here. Well, 
at the same time, like I said, that particular uh, uh, element of that offense, it could actually constitute misconduct uh, on this part of the mandate of the agency. They can go ahead and do it. They may do it concurrently. But that shouldn't All right, actually Mr. Abdullahi. the states, the government, from actually bringing those ones to book. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Abdullahi. Just hold your thoughts. We'll take a moment, and when we come back, we'll take a look at is this the right time for this policy to be coming? And then why does the NJC seek to bar the media from covering uh, proceedings that involve judges or that involve members of the ju judiciary? Is this a right move? And is this the right time for such a move? Stay with us for details.